Today on Your Money, Your Wealth, we've been getting a lot of questions about whether it's possible to do a Roth IRA conversion with a coronavirus-related distribution from your retirement accounts. So Joe and Big Al will explain whether you can and if you should. Plus, more stimulus payment questions, charitable giving strategies from your required minimum distribution, selling stock for tax-free capital gains, and an analysis of exchange-traded funds versus index funds or mutual funds, and derails about beer and how little the YMYW team knows about Wisconsin geography. I'm producer Andy Last, and here are the hosts of Your Money, Your Wealth, Joe Anderson, CFP, and Big Al Clopine, CPA. We got a lot of emails to go through. We'll try to get as many as we can. But we got Matthew writes in from middle of nowhere. So who cares? Wisconsin. (laughs) Yeah, it doesn't really matter. I'm curious, though, of where in Wisconsin. Yeah. I mean, next door neighbor. I know. I've been to Wisconsin. Yeah, right. Me too. I lived in Madison. I've I've been to Madison. Dearest Joe, Al, and what's her face? What's her face? Wow. I like Matthew. (laughs) Already. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Great job on the show. I've been consuming for months now, and anyone who doesn't like what you do is a dang fool. Uh, Thank you. I appreciate how you tend to come up with things from different perspectives, giving us listeners a broader base to think for ourselves. I just wish you would fight more. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm not a fighter. I'm a, I, I'll, do, I'll do banter. I'm from the 60s and 70s. I'm love, <laughs> peace. No war, no no conflict. Yeah, and annoying. Ra- ra- oh. Raise your kids with positive feedback. <laughs> yeah, you still bathe them at 30. <laughs> Whatever it takes, Jim. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's see. Here's the rundown. He's married, 32, bottom of 24% tax bracket, $350,000 in 401k, 403Bs, uh, 10% are Roth contributions, 50 grand in Roth IRAs, no other retirement accounts. All right, so he's 32 years old, bottom of the 24% tax bracket, or he could say the top of the 22% tax bracket. Right. So a couple things right off the bat. Boy, that's that's a great income in in your early 30s, and that's a lot saved in the 401k, 403b in the early 30s. Right. He's got so, yeah, 400. Good job. 400. Yeah, good job, man. Uh, my question, I want to get some of the pre-tax 401k, 403b money reclassified or otherwise converted to a Roth account. The problem, neither plan is eligible for after-tax contributions or in-service distributions. And we don't plan on quitting. All right, well, I caught wind of something in the CARES Act that may allow me to get some moved without penalty, get some money moved without penalty. Is there anything there? Any other ideas? Can't stand to wait another 30 years. Uh, The tax would be paid out on additional income. I'm throwing in a brokerage account. I know it's nice to have some pre-tax dollars for tax diversification and retirement, but I don't see a better opportunity than now to just do some. I again agree with that. Again, love the show and look forward to hear you hopefully fight a little bit about this. Oh, and Andy, just kidding. You're obviously everyone's favorite. Sincerely, Matthew. Wow. Thank you, Matthew. Well, okay. So what? No comment on that? Come on. Well, he's sucking sucking up. (laughs) <laughs> he wanted to get his question on the air and it has to come through you. So <laughs> I get it. All right. So I got a couple ideas, I guess, right? He caught wind of the CRD, Alan. He sure did. That is called a coronavirus related distribution. And that is under the CARES Act. And you are allowed to take a hundred thousand dollars out of a retirement account and you can move it into a regular brokerage account pay the tax over three years, right? or you could pay yourself back over three years and keep it in a retirement account. So as long as the money goes back into a retirement account, there would be no taxes due or penalties or anything like that up to three years. So as long as he has a coronavirus related distribution eligibility, I guess, or is he, if he's eligible, I should say that for this, then yeah, he could do it. And eligibility would be if Matthew or his spouse was diagnosed with COVID or dependent. Uh, Let's say if he was furloughed, maybe laid off. How about a little reduced pay, something like that? He would qualify. How about if he had to take care of the little ones? Maybe he's 32, he's got a couple of kids. He had to stay at home, uh, take care of the kids. Uh, He would potentially qualify there. 
or any other reason that the IRS deems okay. Yeah, plus if you own a business and small a, business guy, yeah, and, and and less customers or less income or shut you down or shut it down. Yeah, yeah. maybe he owns a brewery or something. Yeah, right? well, those are going strong. <laughs> I think that some of the breweries in San Diego started. Uh, they started making uh, what do they call that? The hand sanitizer instead of beer. Oh, really? Yeah. No. So that may affect the taste it's of the good, beer good, for, good. for a while. <laughs> it might. <laughs> so a lot of people are doing this actually. And, and I read something, someone already claimed or said this is like a 403B rescue. Um, you know, some 403B plans have a higher, you know, some higher fees. If it depends yeah. on what, what the investments are. Sure. A lot of the, what we see are in annuities. Right. And so, yes, this, if, if you're eligible, uh, Matthew, uh, take the money out of the 403B 401k plans, and then you could put it into an IRA. And then from the IRA, you could potentially convert over time. I would be careful, though, uh, because you're paying it back. You're not necessarily converting, because some people are doing this too, Al, right? They're taking the money out of a retirement account and then converting it into a Roth IRA. Right. Because you have two options. You can either pay yourself back over three years, so in this case, you're putting it back into a, a retirement account and avoiding the tax. Sure. Or you say, you know what? I need the money. I'm going to pay the tax over three years. So I'm going to pull hundred grand out, no taxes, no penalties, but I will then pay one third of the tax over the next three years. So some people are interpreting that law of saying, I'm going to take the hundred thousand dollars out and I'm going to convert it to a Roth IRA. And then I'm going to pay the tax over three years and get the hundred thousand dollars in the Roth and ease out my tax burden. Yeah. There's that, nothing in the law that says you cannot do that. There's a lot of people that are saying that's not the spirit of the law is, and, and be careful because the IRS may come back and say, you couldn't do that. Correct. But yeah, you're right. The way it was written. And of course we all know it was written very quickly. So they didn't really think of all the alternatives, but yeah, you, you can do that. It's basically a loophole. Yeah, right. And what happens with loopholes? They get plagued at the, some point. Yeah. yeah. And right. sometimes if they're egregious enough, they go back and penalize the people that did it. Right. Because it wasn't really what the intention was. Right. The, the intention wasn't for you to put it into the Roth. The intention was for you to be able to have access cash quickly and not get absolutely murdered in taxes. Right. You know, I'm not sure what the state tax rate is in Wisconsin, but here in California, it can get up to 13%. And so some people have taken money out of retirement accounts and got hit with ordinary income tax plus the state tax right. plus penalties. Sure. I mean, we, we're receiving close to 50% in taxes and penalties just on the distribution. Yeah. When you have the penalties. Yeah. With the, that's one of the nice things about the current distribution. You, there's no penalties, first of all, regardless of the age and you pay the tax over three years. So it's not too bad. I guess I have a thought here, Joe. So if I'm Understanding this right, he's putting 10% of his current contributions into the Roth. Mm -hmm. Roth side of things, why not do 100% in the Roth instead of 10% and it sort of accomplishes the same thing. Although maybe it's not fast enough. I don't know how much he wants to convert. But if you, if, instead of adding to the deductible 403B on a year in year out basis, just switch it all to Roth and have it go all to Roth. And then each year uh, under 50, you can put in 19,500, right? So that's one way to go. Yeah. I mean, he's 32. He wants to work, I don't know, what did he say, 30 years or something like that. Yeah. 24% tax bracket. Yeah. It, that, that's still a cheap rate, in my opinion, because yeah, we I were agree. converting to the top of the 25% just a couple of years ago. That's right. In some cases, even 28, yeah. depending upon the person. Right. The AMT yeah. break, the, the uh, crossover, the, the AMT uh, crossover the point. Trough. The trough. The <laughs> trough. AMT trough. Remember that? <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah, I won't go into that. <laughs> but that was a good strategy way back when. Right. And so 24, I believe, is cheap money for you, Matt. So, Especially so, at 32 years old, he's already got 350 grand if he keeps jamming that much money into a pre-tax account for the next 30 years. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a big number right. for so, sure. So you still want to have money in a pre-tax account. So 350 is a good balance. Stop putting money in there and then just continue to contribute to, uh, yeah, the Roth 401k. That's what I would do for sure. Yeah, I'll just do a little math here. Let's just say you, you put in 20000 per year for the next 30 years, what interest rate do you want to use? 7%. Seven? Yeah. Okay. 7%? Mm -hmm. I would say rate of return versus interest rate because some people think, well, okay. where can you get a 7% yeah, interest yeah. rate? Good point. So, tw <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh -huh. $20,000 payment per year starting with zero. Just, just, we'll just be conservative. So that's uh, 1.9 million. Yeah, a couple million bucks. So just, just do that, right? Then, then I think you get where you want to be. Right. Yeah. 
chugging the, the, the Roth at the 24. Now, when tax brackets go up, then you might want to switch if and when they go up. Yeah, I'm, true. You know, I believe that they, they have to go up. And so this will give you, I would switch to Roth. And if you have a couple of bucks um, and you want to get money out of the 401k, 403bs, and if you qualify for a CRD, you can still take the money out of the CRD, put it into a brokerage account if you want, then that will give you the tax diversification that you need. That's true too. Right? So, um, yeah. okay, cool. All right. Thanks a lot for the, the, the nice words, uh, Matthew. Uh, in the middle of nowhere, I'm still curious because I've probably been there. Probably have. Yeah. Like Wanabagosh. Yeah. Okay. There you go. That's just, an actual place. I know. I just made that up. <laughs> it, it's close. Uh, Chris writes in. He goes, you guys under Miss Last's leadership have made Whoa. us a lot of money because your show has steered us away from many mistakes, truly helping us to turn my money into my wealth. Oh, it's just a little play on words. Wow, there. that's Chris. clever. This is interesting. Well, it's it your says money that it's, wealth. You know that. It says it steered us away, but then it says it's turned his money into his wealth. <laughs> yeah, we steer people from mistakes. We try. And then we create people's, their money into their own wealth. Yeah. That's the purpose of the show. Yeah, that's what we try to do. Here's no, a, uh, no, no guarantees. No we're, zero we're just, guarantees. We're just having a chat here. <laughs> that's all we're doing. A couple <laughs> of kids. Um, but Chris didn't give a location, so no. apparently hasn't listened to us that long. Right. Um, that's a faux pas. Yes. Here's another mistake we don't want to make. All right. Yeah. So let's, right. let's kind of see where he's at here. All right, my wife and I retired on pensions and Social Security and give around $2,500 a month to charity. All right? That's great. Uh, very giving. 30000 a year. It's, it's Chris. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. Very nice gentleman here. Yes. Uh, next July, we will both turn 72 and we'll both have to be taking RMDs a, from a $3 million in IRAs, 401ks, in a 457B plan. All right, so four times three is $120,000 that he will have to give um, a, as a distribution. Right. Give or take as a distribution. Yes, right. Okay, will the $15,000 uh, we give, well, so he's already making a mistake, $2,500 a month to charity. Will the 1500 or $15,000? No, just keep reading. It makes oh, sense. Oh, we give January through <laughs> June next year uh, before we turn 72. In July, count as part of our $60,000 RMD for next year. All right. Or will we have to stop giving to this charity this December until we turn 72 in July and then give six months worth uh, to get this tax break? Uh, we are in the 24% tax bracket. This charity needs our money every month, and we would rather not have uh, to save it up and then give it to them in July. They're... Now, this was not a problem when the RMD and QCD both began the year we turned 70 and a half. Thanks for all your advice. So he wants to use the QCD. So he wants to take the required minimum distribution up to $100,000 and give that directly to a qualifying charity. Correct. And so he's, and he's talking about 2,500 a month. So he's talking about 30 grand. So he wants to give $30,000 and he wants to take the $30,000 out of his retirement account. Right. It sounds like, right? He does. And he, and he wants to know, does he have to wait till the middle of the year when he turns 72 or can he, can that count for the stuff that happened in the beginning of the year? You know, what's interesting with this is that the QCD rules, um, you can still do a QCD if you're 70 and a half. Right. Exactly. So that, that's why this is an interesting question. Yeah. So I think, um, so just to be just to clarify the question for our listeners. So so at age 72, you have to start taking your required minimum distributions. And it actually brings up a question that I don't think anyone's ever asked us. Like, do you have to take your your RMDs like after you turn 72 or can you take it in the year that you turn 72? Why don't we start there? Well, there's I guess there's two sides of that coin. You can wait the following year. I know you even, can, I know right? you can, but could you if you wanted? Yeah, like, it's in the tax year. Yeah, th that's right. So, so let's answer that question first. So, so in other words, the year that you turn 72, even though that's in the month of July, let's just say, you could take your required minimum distribution in January of that year, even though you were 71 at that point, it would still count for an RMD for that year. So it's within the tax year. So then he's he's asking the question, well, then can the QCD count for the RMD. And the QCD is the Qualified Charitable 
right. distribution. Right. So this is that it's just going to go straight to charity. It doesn't even show up on his tax return. That, that's, that's right. And I, I believe the answer is yes. Absolutely it is. Yeah. So if you want to give to the charity, just give the full 30000 from the retirement account. Because it's in the same tax year, yeah. right? So it, it, it counts. But if he's got $3 million in IRAs, he's, he's miscalculated the RMD. Well, yeah, it's 60000 RMD for next year. Maybe that's his and his wife's the other half, or I don't know. Who knows? Cause it's going to be around 4% of the 3 million. Three times four is 12. I know. And but, that added but couple says, zeros is 120. He says next July, we both turn 72 and we both be taking their RMD. So that, that's 60,000 each. Well, so I don't, 60, I don't know. I, I don't know. It doesn't tell us. Right. But you're right. The RMD in total between the two of them will be closer to 120. Right. I agree with that. And then, so you take 30,000 from the 120 mm-hmm. and then you give it to the qualifying chair. And you got 90,000 left. Yeah, I totally agree. Yep. Or if he wants to do it monthly, he can do that as well. Yeah. So maybe what he's going to do is just do the 2500 per month and then sometime towards the end of the year, do the remaining amount for the RMD, and which is fine too. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good point. So l- you can continue with your $2,500, just pull it from the retirement account. Yeah. And then when he does his taxes, that's when he just shores everything up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. So you go $2,500 to the qualifying charity, hey, Fidelity, or whatever your money is, give it to this charity. They need the cash. And then he needs to, let's say he's already got pensions and things like that um, because he hasn't been taking his required distributions is what he's saying. And they're, uh, they're in the what? 24% tax bracket. Is that what he said? Um, Yeah. So what the top of the 22% tax brackets, what? 170, 180,000. Top of the 22. Yeah. It's like 170, 175, somewhere in there. Yeah. So he's got $170,000 of fixed income. Yeah. Right. Already, Already, without taking the RMDs. Sure. Yeah. And then now you put another 120000 on top of that. Yeah. Right Now you're 24, and then when the tax rates revert, he's back in 28 AMT land. Right. So depending on what he's looking at doing, you know, um, you might want to take advantage as well in some of these lower tax rates. Yeah. Uh, there, there's other charitable strategies, too, that, that you could look at. Um, the QCD is a pretty good one, especially with that large of IRA. Yeah, and the reason why people do QCD, one of the main, main reasons is because then it, it's, not a, it's not counted as income, it's not counted as a deduction, and for most people, they can't even itemize anyway, so it's, a lot of it's wasted as a deduction, so that's a big benefit. Uh, in the case where you have high income, there's other reasons you might want to do it this way, so you have lower income, less, less Medicare surtax on, on passive income, or Medicare uh, tax to pay uh, on your on your future Medicare benefits, so there's a, there's a couple reasons there. I was going to say something else. I just forgot. What was I going to say, Joe? Dementia. <laughs> Were you going to mention donor advised fund at all? Uh, we could. I had something even better. <laughs> I don't know. Bunch. You want to bunch your? De- <laughs> you want to bunch some deductions? No. I, I, more to oh, I was thinking. Uh, I was just going to. I was just speculating. Do you think he was a professor? He could be. Yeah, he's got a nice pension. You know, you think of someone that has saved that much, that has a 457B, that has lots of fixed income. Or he could be like a uh, civil service retirement as well. He could be a judge. Yeah, someone really high up. Right? Yeah, yeah. Big fat pension. Senator. He could be. Chris. <laughs> That's why no locations. No, yeah, he didn't want to say. Yeah, he doesn't want to say. Right. No. So, all right. So I'll, I'll call him the judge. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Chris, you'll have to tell us what you really did. Uh, and your lovely wife. We didn't really get her name, did we? Yeah, they never do. Yeah, they just say wife. Yeah, and then my it's wife. like it's my money. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so we got one from Cindy, <laughs> excuse me, uh, from Colorado Springs, Colorado. She goes, my husband and I received a small COVID-19 2020 tax credit, 200 bucks, mostly because I did a 100k IRA to Roth conversion, which puts our income higher. In a recent podcast, you said there is no clawback. Instead, it, it was okay to continue to do Roth conversions. Uh, yeah, okay. I assume you meant no impact on the tax credit stimulus check. Seems odd to me that since I did a conversion in 2019 and early in 2020, we lose out on a stimulus payment, but if someone received a stimulus check and then does a conversion, they have no impact. Is it correct that I can no longer back out of the earlier conversions 
and then redo it later. All right, let me break this thing down because Cindy's pissed. Well, first of all, I'll, I'll cut to the chase. It is correct. Well, well, I think here's what she's saying, though. Correct me if I'm wrong, Al. Yeah. She did a Roth IRA conversion in 2019. Yeah. Or 2018, let's say, or whatever it was. Well, she she, she filed a tax return yeah. on whatever that they looked at. Because of the conversion, it pushed up their adjusted gross income where they phased out of the overall $1,200 or $2,400 stimulus check. Correct. So she got $200 out of the, 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 the $2,400 that they were eligible for, depending on income. Because they they their income was too high, so they got because phased out. If, if she's, yeah, my husband and I. So their income got up to roughly $200,000, because that's when you fully phase out of the stimulus check. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So she did the conversion. She filed a tax return. Even though the tax credit is based on your 2020 tax return, they looked and said, all right, well, here in 2018, whatever's on file, look, you qualified for a couple of bucks, right? Yeah. But here's what's going to happen. Let's say in 2020, they do no longer conversions, right? And their income qualifies for a stimulus check. Does she get it? Yes, she does. How much does she get? She gets 2200 so if she does not do a conversion or if she keeps her adjusted gross income under one hundred fifty thousand dollars yeah you will then receive the tax credit on your 2020 tax return yeah i agree with that so and let me just supplement that so if the conversion was done in 2019 and you filed that return and they based it upon 19 can you then go back and change it? Well, 2019 already happened, so there's no way to undo that. 2020, if you already did a conversion in 2020, not, not knowing this was going to happen, it's too late. There's no recharacterizations. If you haven't already done a Roth conversion in 2020 and you keep your income low enough, below 150,000, you'll get all the rest of the credit, but you'll have to wait till you file your next year's tax return. You won't get it early. You will get it in April next year. Correct. Yep, that's right. So, I don't know. I think we covered all our bases there. I think, I think we got it, yep. We did a webinar last week on the CARES Act and retirement taxes, and Joe and Big Al answered listener questions live. If you missed it or want to relive it, check out the replay in the podcast show notes at yourmoneyyourwealth.com. Just click the link in the description of today's episode in your podcast app to go to the show notes where you can watch that YMYW webinar, download the CARES Act guide, and read the transcript of this podcast. Then, when you invariably have more questions, just click the Ask Joe and Al on air banner in the podcast show notes to send them in as a voice message or as an email. David writes in from Allentown, Pennsylvania. Is that right? Allentown? You ever been there, Allen? Allentown? Um, you'd think I would, but no, I haven't been there. Yes, they named it it's spelled there. wrong. Got it. Hi, Andy, Joe, and Big Al. This is David from Allentown, PA. Great show. Never miss an episode. Just listen to episode 274. I, That's wh- another one. What are these, who are these freaks? That t- <laughs> no. uh, a listener mentioned a coronavirus-related distribution and then indirectly rolled into an IRA. I did some research. Some people are calling it a 403B escape hatch. Oh, that's what you were talking about earlier. Escape hatch. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like a great strategy to get my funds and options limited to a 403B to a more versatile IRA, okay? Let's see what David's got here. He's got a couple questions, but before, let's give you some background. I'm 45, and my income puts me deep into a high tax bracket. So he's very modest. Yes. Very modest person here uh, versus, you know, most people. I got $5 million bucks in my IRA. <laughs> and the I made way more than the wife. <laughs> yes. And I make $750,000 a year. I max out. And, okay. So, so David's modest. Yeah. I have you, 403B and 457 that I fully fund every year. I have a deferred compensation plan funded by my employer. Uh, my employer offers a Roth 403B, but because of my income, I didn't think it was a good idea. I think I should be able to be in a lower tax bracket when I retire. Thanks. To your great advice, I started doing backdoor Roth IRA conversions for the last three years since I couldn't contribute directly until because of my salary. Believe it or not, my financial advisor never said a word about it. When I asked him about what I learned in your show, he just said, yes, you can do that. (laughs) So much for good advice from him. I also have broker accounts uh, that I fund with after-tax monies. Okay, so I wonder if you're still with... uh, 
the advisor. <laughs> maybe not. Or if the advisor like has started listening to this show. Yeah, maybe, maybe, we we can, maybe we can help out your advisor. Have them tune in. I mean, we got a lot of advisors that listen to the show. So what I hear, anyway. That's, that's what you're guessing? Yeah. Based upon some questions that are really technical. Some, uh, you guarantee. Yeah. I mean, we have CPAs. I, I know. Right in. Yeah, uh, I do. Well, I mean, I, we give CE credits here. We have Dennis from Coronado that writes in. <laughs> I, we know who that is. He is a CPA. <laughs> uh, here are my questions. If I do a coronavirus-related distribution, I do qualify. Salary now hours were cut. And then put the full amount into a traditional IRA. Is that going to have effect in uh, my ability to do a backdoor Roth conversion in the future? Would it be better to have two separate traditional IRAs to be able to trace uh, those transactions separately for tax purposes. David, got bad news for you. No, don't do that because you would not be able to do a backdoor Roth any longer because they take a look at IRAs in aggregate. It doesn't matter if you have two or three or four separate accounts. But is it better to get the money out of the 43B as part of the rescue or is it because that will blow up the backdoor Roth? strategy or is it better just to not do it? Well, I mean, I, I, mean I wish David would be a little bit more specific on his big wallet, <laughs> right? Big wallet on big David. Some, maybe a little bit better advice. I, I mean, he's like, well, my income is well, pretty high and I'm, I'm, I'm deep in a high tax bracket. Yeah, but you just you just congratulated him on not bragging. And well, now you're saying he should have said it's $5 million and I make $2 million well, a year. No, I'm not saying, I mean, these guys brag. I'm just saying how they position it in their email sometimes. It's like, come on out hot. Yeah, right. And then him, he's just kind of like hiding behind his big tax bracket. Yeah. So here's what I'll say. I, I think you have to evaluate the positive impact of one over the other. Because right. if you do it, and it's not a bad idea for a 403B rescue, potentially, but you do blow your Roth, uh, backdoor Roth contribution. Yep. So you would no longer be able to do backdoors. But then how much money do you have? You're 45 years old. How much longer do you want to work? What tax bracket are you really in? Maybe a high tax bracket. <laughs> For David is not that high for me. <laughs> and I would give him some advice by saying, all right, here's how much money that you have. Run some numbers here. Talk to your your advisor. Yeah, um, but he's not that good. Maybe he's terrible. <laughs> uh, okay. So anyway, so that what's the second question? Okay. On a different topic, is there any other way I could create tax diversification optimization? My plan does not allow in-service distributions or no hardship withdrawals, so a mega Roth is not an option for, uh, option for me. Thanks again for the great show, and maybe should consider opening an office here in the Northeast. So he's ready to ditch his advisor. Yeah, uh, ready, ready to find the, the real road to yeah. financial freedom. I was thinking maybe we'll go west to Hawaii. I don't know if we're going east to <laughs> Allentown? Yeah. yeah, right there. We, we're we're going to set up a little satellite office for I, Big Al in I'm, Allentown. I'm gonna, we're going to run it. <laughs> this is Big Al from Allentown. <laughs> I like it. It's going to be awesome. Uh, no, I mean, yeah, you could do a, a coronavirus. I mean, this is what you do. He qualifies for a CRD. So he could take money out of his 403B or 457. The 403B escape hatch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who the hell is he listening to? I mean, who's coming up with that stupid term? Maybe that was the financial advisor. <laughs> yes, but he didn't even know what a backdoor Roth was. So I thought it was that guy. Just take the money out and then put it into a brokerage account. Yeah, I Pay the I tax agree. over three years. I agree with that. That will Be give you $100,000 in a, a brokerage account. Because then you get tax diversification, right? And and you can manage it pretty cheaply by doing tax loss harvesting and, and all that kind of good stuff. And even when you do have tax, it's capital gain tax. It's a cheap rate. In the meantime, you still do your Roth, back to Roth contributions. Yeah, or you do this too. Let's say one year, you take a look, you do a CRD. All right. Okay. So coronavirus related distribution, he can pull up to a hundred thousand dollars. So he's got two options. He can pay the tax over three years yep. or he can pay himself back. Yeah. True. So let's say he takes hundred grand out, 50,000 goes into the brokerage account. The other 50,000 goes into, he, pay, he pays back into an IRA. And so what's a third of 50 grand now? 17,000? Yes. 16,667. Okay. So he would pay $17,000 of income would show up on his tax return in one year, 17 the next. So that one blow him up in this huge tax bracket, right? Sure. And then he could use that cash and then he could convert the other 50 and then it wouldn't screw up his backdoor Roth. Oh, I like that. Right? Yeah, very clever. So you're, you're using a little bit of both. You got a little bit of liquidity there. 
and then you're taking the other and you're actually paying it back into an IRA. And then from that IRA, you do your back doors, but then you also convert more and get rid of the overall 50 plus the back doors. You can get, you know, that much more and do into uh, Roth IRAs. Okay. I give that my staff of approval. All right. That's Sounds the best good. idea. Okay. There you go, David. Uh, Jim from Cedar Falls, Iowa. Every time I think of Iowa, I think of the Amana colonies. <laughs> you do? <laughs> Just awful, awful vacation I had. Uh, okay. Uh, hey guys, triggered we, him. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's Apparently, a trigger. It's I've a never, trigger. I've never been. Um, you're not missing much. Hey guys, big fan of the show. I'm 28. My wife is 27. Earn about fifty thousand dollars a year, and she earns about forty. I have a brokerage account that gained a lot in value. If we put nineteen five and four hundred one k each, as well as thirty five hundred dollars into an HSA. Uh, we can take 21k from my brokerage yearly and pay zero tax, uh, federal tax. Let's see. So ninety thousand dollars is the income now. And let's say it takes a standard deduction. Call that. Yeah, just say twenty five. Twenty five grand. So sixty five is left. And then he's going to put nineteen five into his four hundred one k. So another twenty is down. Another twenty from her. That gets his income where. Yeah, so that's probably about 25, right? 65. 65 minus 40. So wouldn't you want to do a Roth 401k? Well, no, he's got he's got large brokerage. Uh, he's got some capital gains, right? Yeah. I have a brokerage account that gained a lot in value. I don't know what a lot is. I wonder if it's as big as, what's his name's tax bracket? <laughs> <laughs> David from Allentown? <laughs> yeah. Could be. So if we, if we put 19.5 into a 401k each, so that's $40,000 plus another 3,000. So that's six, seven. So that's $47,000. Yes. Yeah, so that's pre-tax on top of 25, call it $75,000. They own 90, 75, 90 minus 75 is what? 15. 15 grand. So, all right. Can we take $21,000 from my brokerage yearly and pay zero fees? Well, you could get up to the $80,000 of uh, taxable income is what you want to look at, Jim. Uh, so once you get to that $80,000 or $81,000 of taxable income, then that's where the capital gains come in. So if you're trying to sell some stock, right, and if you get your income down to $15,000, uh, $65,000 of gain would be tax-free. Right. Okay. Is I'm that with, math right? I don't have a calculator and I'm doing this fast. Well, yeah. I mean, the I wasn't listening. Give me the but stupid calculator. The, the, <laughs> but the concept is that when you have capital gains and you're in the in the 12, currently the 12% bracket, which for a married couple, let's call it $80,000 taxable income, the capital gains up to that point are tax-free. Anyway, what's your, what, you want, what do you want me to do? $90,000. Okay. Right? Minus... Uh, 20, 40, 50, 65, 73,000. So 90 minus 73. Mm -hmm. Okay, 17. 17,000. All right, and then 17,000 minus 80. Okay, so 63. So $63,000 is what he could sell in the brokerage account and pay zero tax if he was going to do all of this. Yeah, now maybe... He's already saying the 50 and 40 is net of the 401k, and that's what he's taxed on. And if that's true, we're 40,000 off. Right. But the concept is look at what your taxable income is with your income, uh, you know, with, with your income from your, your job, right, minus the standard deduction. And then what is that to get to the $80,000 number? That's how much you can sell in capital gains and pay no tax. Very good. So I wonder. Uh, I wonder where he got that 21000 figure. Well, I'm thinking maybe the 50 and 40 is net of the 401k, but I, I don't know. Yeah. Hard to say. So, again, Jim, just right, use the standard deduction, I guess, 25000 take your income minus the standard, minus what you're going to put in. Look at your taxable income, then you can sell anything up to that $80,000 and pay zero uh, zero tax. Yeah, and, of course, I don't know about Iowa taxes. California doesn't have that rule, so they still tax you in California. Um, and California doesn't have a capital gains rate, so they pay. You have to pay ordinary income tax. Most other states are more generous, I think, on capital gains. 
On a federal level, planning well in advance may enable you to take advantage of opportunities and benefits now available under the new tax rules in the CARES Act, the SECURE Act, and the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. Click the link in the description of today's episode in your podcast app to go to the show notes and download the brand new 2020 Tax Planning Guide and start preparing now. Subscribe to the YMYW newsletter in the podcast show notes as well, so you'll be among the first to know when there are new tax changes and new strategies and new podcast episodes. Sonia, no location given. I think I got double the stimulus in the air, but I'm widowed as of 125.18. I filed single in 2019. Should I have filed surviving spouse? I've deposited the $2,400 check and I'm waiting to see. So Sonia um, received $2,400 in a stimulus check. Right. Because they looked at 2018 tax returns. And saw two taxpayers on there. Yeah, that, that's exactly her, right. And her in her deceased spouse. So, so the first, first point, tax-wise, uh, when you're widowed, you file joint for just that year that your spouse passed. The following year, you file single. Unless you have a minor child, then you file a surviving spouse for a couple more years after that. So unless you have a young child, no, you can't file surviving spouse after that, that first year. Surviving spouse gives you the same tax brackets as yeah, a as married a, couple. Right. Yeah. So it's higher. It's, it's low, lesser tax. Lesser tax than head right. of household. But the second question, so she got an extra $1,200 and she deposited it. She's waiting to see what happens. So, and I think that's what we said a few weeks ago. I've got new information now. Clawbacks? Um, this is from the IRS. Okay. This is actually a, an article from AARP, which is easier to read than the IRS website. Okay. Bigger print? Yeah, bigger print, <laughs> bigger print for us old guys. Uh, a stimulus, and this is from the IRS website, a stimulus payment made to someone who died before receipt of the payment should be returned to the IRS should oh, be wow. returned to the IRS according to guidance recently posted on irs.gov uh, and it was um, yeah May 6th and then they updated it May 26th so they they want this money back and then they further go they tell you how to do it they hmm. tell you to if you haven't cashed the check then write void on it and send the check back to them okay and then with a note stating why you're returning it so uh, how do these stimulus checks come? Do they write your name? Well, they, if, if, if you didn't have direct deposit on your refund, on your tax return, you just got the check. So that's if you got a paper check and you haven't cashed it. Now, if you did get a paper check. But she's saying she deposited the money. So she, she got one named in the deceased husband's name. Well, yeah, but it so, would have been named for both of them because it was a single $2,400 check. How do you well, re it, return it, half it of it? It could have been. I think it was probably more likely just a direct deposit because that's what most people do. They put their bank information. So, it or maybe not. Maybe it was just already deposited. Who knows? Maybe she endorsed it for him. I mean, banks don't really check that stuff very much anymore. So, nevertheless, here's the answer on that one is uh, if you, um, you, you, you need to write the IRS a personal check to your IRS location and on the check or money order, write U.S. Treasury write 2020 EIP. I don't even know what that stands for. 2020 EIP. And the taxpayer identification number, like Social Security, include a brief explanation of the reason for returning the EIP. Actually, go to, go to the AARP website and type in stimulus check. This article will pop up. So now, what if you don't do it? I doubt if anything's going to happen. I mean, I'm, I'm just guessing at that, but it seems like the IRS and government has better things to do. Like, Go after PPP loan people. <laughs> <laughs> that should tell you about. <laughs> oh, like, like Steak Shack. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, sorry, Sonia, because I, I think I responded to her and said there was no clawbacks. And she's like, oh, well, thank God. There is no clawbacks if you're entitled to it. No. According, but this is, you know, this is, keeps changing, right? Got it. Tom writes in from Chantilly. Virginia? Yeah. Yep. Have you been there? Chantilly? Yeah. <laughs> I would <laughs> like to go. That's, that's, a, that's kind of a cool name. Yeah, I think it sounds cool. I've never been either. Chantilly. Hmm. All right. Joe, Big Al, and Andy, I'm a huge fan of the podcast and look forward to it every week. 
All right, there's not a lot to do there in Chantilly, apparently. You don't know that. Well, if he's looking forward to this <laughs> piece of garbage. <laughs> well, good point. Uh, I subscribe to your philosophy of purchasing total market funds. These types of investments get you wide market exposures with extremely low fees. I don't hear you talk specifically about ETFs um, or exchange-traded funds. Uh, exchange-traded funds have relatively low fees and target specific market sectors. I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts on ETFs versus traditional mutual funds. Uh, please consider the pros and cons, both in and out of retirement accounts. Thank you in advance. Tom from Chantley, Chantilly, Virginia. Chantilly, yes. Um, all right. Real high level. They're almost identical. Yeah, they're pretty similar. Right. I mean, for the average listener of your money, your wealth, I don't think we need to go that much deeper. But for Tom in Chantilly, I'll go a little bit deeper. Okay. Um, Exchange traded fund. An we'll ETF. To- because l- let's say in our portfolios that we help our clients with, we have $2.5 billion of client assets. Right? Um, and we use exchange traded funds. We use index funds. And we also use... I guess institutional funds. Yeah, all of them in the in, in the the characteristics of what we look at as a good investment is first of all, do you have broad market exposure? Uh, we don't necessarily want to time markets and try to pick individual stocks because it's very difficult to do that just with all the information and knowledge that everyone has. And it's, and, and Tom agrees with that investment philosophy. Right. Second, we look at is how is the product structured, right? So you could get broad market. Um, exposure in a lot of different ways. You could do, uh, you could have broad market exposure yourself. You could buy individual stocks. You could buy the entire market yourself and buy in, buy them individually. Uh, that would be pretty expensive uh, because each stock will probably have a bid ask spread. There's a there's a there's a spread there of what the the market makers making on buying and selling stocks. So we'd like to package them up and have the institutions do it for us. So you could do it through a separate, um, separate managed account. You could do it through an index fund, a regular mutual fund, or you could do it through an exchange traded fund. I guess you could do it through a closed end fund. You could do it through a exchange traded note. You could do some leverage. Yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of ways to get market exposure with an ETF. The major difference there is that you have more transparency in an exchange traded fund. Uh, they're very low in fees, like an index fund. Uh, and you're buying it as a stock. So you're buying it at real time versus net asset value uh, that you would purchase an index fund. So you would buy a, a mutual fund at the end of the close or an exchange traded fund. You're buying and selling the exchange traded fund right on the market, depending on the, um, you know, whatever the price is that you're buying it for. So th- there's a lot more, I guess, complexities of how they actually construct and build exchange traded funds versus index funds, but I'm not going to go there. Um, but we like ETFs. I think maybe that's what he's asking for our endorsement. Yeah, I think that it, it. I guess I would say it's index fund and ETF are they're very similar. I, I think you hit on the main difference is an index fund when you buy and sell, you get the price at the close of the of the market that day. When you buy and sell an ETF, you get the price at that exact second, right? Because it's active pricing. So that so that's a difference. And you're I, buying, yeah. And let's say if you're if you're if you're putting money five hundred dollars a month into a brokerage account or five hundred dollars a week or whatever. I'd pick an index fund if you're dollar cost averaging in uh, because it could be cheaper versus depending on how volatile the markets are. I don't know. That could be a con. The bid ask could go up and you pay a little bit more commission. I I think there's, there's almost no difference. So it's hard to, it, to me, it's like we have two groceries, main two grocery stores in San Diego. We have Ralph's and Vons. I guess we have Albertson. So we got three, but I'll say two right now. Sprouts. Yeah. Yeah. Trader Joe's. Whole Foods. Yeah. (laughs) Let's go with Ralph's and Vaughn's. So it's like they all they sell the same stuff, you know, just like an ETF or an index fund. They have the same kind of investments. They just have slightly different rules, maybe different opening and closing hours. So that's about it. How about that? Uh, I'm not buying that one, but that's that, all right. That that's was, a good that was way better than you bid-ass. It's true. It's like, who cares? <laughs> 
I'm just trying to, he, he asked a, a question, intelligent question. I'm trying to give him an intelligent answer. I mean, you're talking about custodians with Ralph's and Bonds, same, like TD Ameritrade same, versus Fidelity. Same idea. It's it's just a kind of a wrapper that holds a bunch of investments. Okay, I'll buy that. We got to take a break, or that's it. That's for that. Yeah, that's it. We'll see you next week. Show's called Your Money Well. Yes, that is it, except for the derails. Your Money, Your Wealth is presented by Pure Financial Advisors. Click the free assessment button at yourmoneyyourwealth.com or call 888-994-6257 to schedule a financial assessment video conference with a certified financial planner from Pure. It's a free, deeper dive into your financial situation. Schedule that free assessment by visiting yourmoneyyourwealth.com or call 888-994-6257. That's 888-994-6257. Pure Financial Advisors is a registered investment advisor. This show does not intend to provide personalized investment advice through this broadcast and does not represent that the securities or services discussed are suitable for any investor. Investors are advised not to rely on any information contained in the broadcast in the process of making a full and informed investment decision. Answering your money questions. The money questions don't stop and we will not stop answering them. Until Al retires, <laughs> then we will stop. Um, you lived in Wisconsin. I did. I Why? Did. When? I was a vice president for a major financial planning firm ah. um, in Madison, Wisconsin. Wow! Hated every minute. I know of that. It. That's Hated why you minute. always say bad things about Wisconsin. Yeah, I liked the beer. I liked um, New Glarus Spotted Cow. That was delicious. Thank you. You guys want to send me some, Matthew. I thought you were into PBR. I do like PBR as well. I like Coors Lights. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. But if I'm going to have something on the wild side, yeah, it'll you'll probably go. be a spotted cow from Got it. Nuclearis. Okay. Beer. All right. Um, you, you don't really like the local San Diego beer, do you? No, not at all. Yeah. I mean, we're known for craft beer. No. Of course, every place I go around the country, they say the same thing. We're known for craft beer. So I think everywhere is oh, known course. for craft beer. Yeah. Yeah, like Stone. I don't really care for. I mean, yeah, it's good for them. This town is huge for IPAs. They love IPAs here. I don't understand why. I like uh, Latitude Thirty Three Blood Orange IPA. That's in Oceanside. Blood Orange. Blood Orange. I like that blood orange flavor. Is that um, like you put an orange peel in it too? You're one of those no, guys. No, no. There's a there is a type of orange. It's called Blood Orange. It's got a richer color than the typical orange. So what color is your beer? It's still beer color, but <laughs> it's, but it's got an orange orange glow hue it. to it. Got kind it. of a blood orange hue. Got it. All right. Uh, so thank you, Matthew, for going for letting us get on that tangent. Um, yeah, I've been. Uh, let's see. When I went, we had visited friends in Madison, and we did a little tour around. Is it like Michigan? I guess that's the lake that's on that's that borders Wisconsin. I think so. Here. I never went. I have no idea. <laughs> Lake Superior. We're showing our ignorance. No, it's going to be Lake. No, I, that's on the top I, of Minnesota. I think Let's it was. I think Lake it was Michigan. I think it was Michigan. I think so. Could be wrong. No math. I know. I know the Pacific Ocean. Forget the lakes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>